Peace, everyone. This is the Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. Before we get into this video, real quick, I want to invite everybody to a fun, exciting way to support my channel and my content. Um, for just a little over $20, you can get a Divine Masculine Tea or a Rise of the Divine Masculine Tea uh, for any guy or if you're a guy yourself. Uh, what this shirt really represents uh, is the king, protector, provider, and lover. All of the tenets of the divine masculine. So if you or somebody you know is representing those qualities, you know, you can support this channel and you can gift them with an awesome shirt. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, click the link in the description if interested. And thank you for listening. Peace. But the reason why we're here, <laughs> the solar eclipse and cancer, July 12th, 2018, the rise of the black Madonna. Now, the last time we were here, we were discussing Lazarus rising and things of that nature. And so Lo and behold, in popular culture, we had the death of the rapper XXX Tentacion, which we, if you've been following this channel, we've been talking about sacrifices and energy and who were they trying to raise up with the Met Gala and all of that. And so with the death of this young man, we can clearly see, you know, their target. And so not to say he was a sacrifice or any conspiracy theory or anything like that. But if you've been following my channel, we fully understand the tenets of sacrifice and the tenets of, you know, spirituality and how it manifests in this world. So, you know, sorry to hear about the death and but more or less just the energy that we have been discussing on this channel for the past months. You know, these things are coming to manifest. And I only bring that up because the things that I'm going to be discussing in this video are uber positive. Uh, so, you know, I don't, usually, you know, it's like grim, but, you know, it's not really dark and grim, the information that I'm putting out. I'm really talking about the things that you really need to clear yourself of so you can begin to receive the benefits of a purpose driven life and things of that nature. So if you've been following this channel and you've been doing the work, you know, this solar eclipse is a payoff. So let's talk about what's actually happening <laughs> so we can get a full description of what we need to do and just all of the energy that's happening. Now me, I've been really studying these shapes and these trines and these things like that in other areas like sacred geometry and things of this nature. So to see this placement is kind of like, wow, <laughs> you know, cause I fully understand and overstand the concept, which is trying to be laid out. And so I'm so excited about this message today. Uh, so excited about this channel, so excited about this information. And so my only goal is that you understand what I'm trying to say based on the astrology and that it also resonates with you. And so there are two grand. Well, first off, let me say that this solar eclipse, this new moon is going to be opposed Pluto. Exact. And so we'll talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about these two grand trines. Uh, we've been talking about grand trines that have been happening a part of this initial trine between Neptune and Jupiter and Scorpio. I think every astrology video. So, you know, another grand trine is taking place with some more added flavor, but this flavor is a solar eclipse flavor. So, you know, them touches, they still coming, you know, those miracles and those blessings, they still coming, but you know, different flavors and different vibration. Uh, and so that was the water sign grand trine. 
And also we have a masculine earth sign grand trine, including Venus and Virgo, Uranus and Taurus, Saturn and Capricorn. And we'll break down what these trines mean. And also, you know, just, just the overall gist of this new moon. And I'm sorry if I said full moon at all during this video, but we're talking about a new moon in Cancer, a solar eclipse. And we want to just talk about everything that it means and everything that it represents, you know. A lot of times in consciousness on Facebook, on social media, whether it be Instagram, you see like during full moons where people start to really do rituals and really do work, you know. To me, that's like planting a seed during harvest season while everybody is like picking crops. You're trying to plant on top of those crops and nature really doesn't work like that. And this is my personal opinion. Uh, ultimately, you can do spells whenever you want to rituals whenever you want to. But to align with nature, I think it's best to do work during the new moon. And the reason I say that is because the moon is the darkest, our slate is the cleanest, and you really can, like I just imagine it to planting my seed in soil, and from that, you know, manifesting that which I wanna manifest. So the new moon is like the soil. And so what are you gonna plant in your soil during this new moon? And hopefully, and more than likely, a full moon is where that seed will be manifested because we're not just dealing with the regular new moon, we're dealing with the solar eclipse. So in reality, a solar eclipse is when the earth is situated between the sun and the moon, blocking out the sun for a period of time. And so what happens when the sun, well, when the earth blocks out the sun, it allows for the moon to take over for a period of time. So generally when the moon takes over it's the night and so when the when the night takes over we're generally tired and things of that nature feminine energy can drain you or just generally make you tired a time for rest i know last last year we had a solar eclipse in august sometime and i remember a lot of people telling me that they were tired i for one took like a major nap during this time so generally solar eclipse are draining and this happens during the daytime wherever it happens at and that's why it's supposed to represent ultimately esoterically now a disruption of your habits uh, the world is normally masculine energy during the day and so a solar eclipse comes and kind of disrupts that energy and so esoterically you're resetting your energy you're resetting you're resetting your cosmic flow and so this is what's happening. And so generally, if you're not aware of what's happening, you may be feeling like, you know, you lost your left shoe, which has happened to me. I lost my shoes. <laughs> Never long story. But anyways, uh, back to the point of a solar eclipse being a powerful time for not only manifestation, but just disruption or major changes. And from this point, we want to begin to understand where those changes are and how those changes may manifest in our personal lives, also in just different areas in our lives, I guess. All of these planets fall in a particular constellation, but how it relates to you is basically in what house it falls in in your chart. And that's why it's good to contact an astrologer, someone like myself that can kind of see, okay, this is happening, but where is it happening and relates to your chart? What planets are influenced by this, by this energy? You know, be sure to reach out to me at hoodmystic at gmail.com. But back to this solar eclipse at a opposite of Pluto and Capricorn. This is what psychologists may call shadow projection and if not understood this could be a domino effect of people projecting pain 
and you not knowing that they're projecting pain and maybe you believe what they're saying when they lash out and this may cause you to be depressed or on the other side are you lashing out towards your kids are you lashing out to your parents are you lashing out to your partner this is something that is up with you you know there is ultimately no one to blame for your pain or your anger the person that is to blame is you for not healing it so i'm not talking to people who've been listening to this channel for a while because ultimately we've been in the process of healing we've been in the process of reaching our inner peace and so this solar eclipse opposed pluto since we're unifying this energy uh you'll be able to be granted you know like we're not doing this for nothing so we're gonna be given our resources or you know changes major changes in our lives you know um i'm usually not the oprah winfrey of astrology but today i feel like you get a car you get a car and she gets a car everybody gets a car you know i feel like that energy is really about to rain down on this planet and so let's talk about it um let's talk about these grand trines first let's deal with this earth sign grand trine which is shown in the brown okay and let's talk about what it represents esoterically uh, this grand trine consists of three planets all in the earth sign okay when you have a grand trine all of the planets reside in Earth constellations. Now, the planets in the constellations that we're discussing are Uranus and Taurus, Venus and Virgo, and Saturn and Capricorn. And so let's talk about these things one by one. And then let's just discuss what a trine is. And then let's discuss the water sign after this. So Uranus and Taurus wants to bring terrestrial changes, terrestrial changes, Earth changes, real life changes, and whatever house it falls in your chart uh, so if you don't know what house uranus is in in your chart right now this is something that you want to know all of these planets you want to know what house they fall in in your chart and so venus and virgo it really wants you to be in a situation where you can love your environment love your situation or love who you you're choosing to deal with this is very terrestrial this is very real very tangible stuff that's happening saturn and capricorn want you to not simply think about this energy or ide idealize it or imagine it saturn and capricorn actually want you to begin to prepare actually provide the structure actually like you know if they build it they will come type of deal so ultimately understanding this energy that's happening this is going to be potent tangible life-changing and energy with this grand trine and it's really capped off by venus and virgo and so venus and virgo is what is the moving part of this transit that actually activates it and so you know this is close to me because this is conjunct my natal venus and virgo and so what this says to me personally, if I was to read myself, is that, you know, a change is going to come in the things that I actually see with my eyes that I'm going to, you know, be loving on something or, you know, a real change in my environment. And so let's talk about this water sign, Grand Trine. And now the water sign is the blue triangle and the, and the planets involved with this Grand Trine is Neptune and Pisces, Jupiter and Scorpio, and ultimately the new moon. And the new moon is whenever the moon is conjunct the sun. And the planet that the new moon is in is in Cancer, okay? And so Neptune and Pisces represents the third eye opening or self-realization. I have a wonderful video on Neptune explained on my channel. And that also a video on Pluto working on Uranus right now. But Neptune and Pluto Explained is also on my channel. So be sure to check those videos out to get a full in-depth 
understanding of those outer planets that nobody really understands <laughs> and nobody can fully like really break down i think i did a good job so be sure to check those videos out um but anyways neptune and pisces third eye opening self-realization this is a big deal trying in jupiter and scorpio and it wants you to clear your trauma it wants you to deal with your ptsd it wants you to deal with all of that mental health stuff and it doesn't want you to constantly deal with it in the sense of suppression or not actually facing it you know we've been doing that for far too long but when it comes to truly expansion when it comes to truly living our best lives we cannot do this without addressing our shadow so jupiter and scorpio if you're not ready to deal with shit, it's gonna constantly deal it's gonna constantly throw stuff in your face and and you know you can be scared and run you can only run but for so long so you know and it's not a bad thing you know jupiter wants to expand jupiter wants to give you your best life but it will not you know do it with this trauma that you holding on to ultimately it's in scorpio so it's giving you an opportunity to transform that trauma and really live your best life now if things are hurting you things are bothering you and you wanting things to be better for you but you're not addressing the things that are hurting you you're not addressing the things that are bothering you you know this is what's creating your trouble in your life this is what's creating the problems not the actual problem so it's key to really understand that new moon in cancer you know, it's going to be in the second deacon, which is actually ruled by the moon. So this to me shows up as emotions, emotions and more emotions. And so how do we navigate this? How do we deal with this energy? Because. This this energy is very good, but like with all things how do you maintain the good things so it's just not like you're not one of those nba players with 30 million dollars and you blow it in two years and things of that nature that's a worse feeling than never having it <laughs> believe it or not you know uh, so just understanding gratitude and different ideas toward sustaining or persevering or enduring or kindling a fire and things of that nature this is what we're trying to establish we're trying to establish balance and also enjoyment also concepts of gratitude gratitude is more than an external idea that you know i'm grateful for something external if that's how you use gratitude then you are greatly misusing gratitude you can use gratitude living in a cardboard box because gratitude is a vibration like a seed that like during the new moon you can be one or the other uh so we're talking about the four cups tarot card which is the deacon tarot card the third deacon tarot card of cancer and so this kind this card it really reminds me of like a scorpion for some reason because even though but it's more of like a pot or even like a crab <laughs> for real like you know something that's very majestic might even taste good but if you if you slip in it will snap the hell out of you and so it'll wake you up so generally we always in positive situation there are miracles happening you know if you ever want to talk to me about miracles and things of that nature be sure to message me because i have a message in regards to miracles like you know how i feel personally about miracles and how millions upon millions of miracles are happening moment by moment and our ignorance of it is just simply that you know and so from there if you're able to tap into the frequency of gratitude you're straight but you know people aren't like that people generally take their good will or all the good things in their life for granted because they want more you know and this is an energy as well dealing with the four cups dealing with the solar eclipse understanding how to plant seeds how to manifest things in your life 
the energy <laughs> also relating to your emotions you know the energy the most powerful energy this energy i've been working with this energy all year and i ain't been doing nothing but manifesting for myself is gratitude no matter what situation you're in you can use gratitude right now and begin to change a situation immediately you know um the dark side to like in relationships or being single or being in a relationship the four of cups shows up the dark side of this is i'm alone and nobody loves me the light side of this is i'm grateful that i'm single and free you know it's the same situation but two different attitudes towards that same situation uh so many times so many people like people that i respect complain about being single and not being able to attract somebody in their life and not realizing that that's a vibration that they're carrying forward uh even in a relationship you know you can feel like you're trapped and you want to get out of this relationship and i'm tired of this person the light side of this energy is that you know someone has my back and i'm grateful you know both of those are the same situation and just two different frequencies and two vibrate two different vibrations that one could access you know the four of cups is called the lord of luxury and so to maintain luxury you have to maintain some sort of dark side because generally you know you have this money but you ain't giving it all away to homeless now is you you keeping some of it to yourself so you know you gotta kind of <laughs> figure out a way to balance you know philanthropy and uh taking care of yourself because generally you're not gonna be in a position where you're getting everything that you want in your life and you're not giving that's imbalance and it just doesn't work that way so generally creating a healthy balance and knowing philanthropy and how it how it kind of reverberates into other areas in your life will be something key to recognize and so generally this solar eclipse is a time for you to set intentions a time for your purpose to begin to flourish and show itself and the spiritual work that you've been doing thus far allow this work to begin to manifest for you in great ways because the energy is strong the energy is powerful you have support and so let's get into more of this support and let's first before we get into the orisha of the week let's talk about the power of the orisha of the week based on the element and based on the symbology so we have the element of water and the symbology of water is emotions and so emotions work like this so if i'm if i tell you you are so beautiful no no like no you you are the finest girl i ever saw like no for real like i'm like like you are like i just want to look at you forever like i could never get tired of looking at you that what am i what am i speaking to i'm speaking to your emotions and you could feel that the same way if i'm talking about you in a sense of being the most wretched person that i've ever saw and i can't stand looking at you that triggers your emotion that is a sense you know and maybe you think about what i said maybe you don't but you definitely feel it and so what are we <laughs> we are mostly water and so generally we tend to forget that uh living in a material world and things of that nature but understanding the things that we say to ourselves and the vibration that we hold for ourselves it actually affects us on a multi-level sense and so dr emoto if you never heard about dr emoto be sure to look up his work he is an author he speaks to this ad nauseum and so i just wanted to send him a shot out uh because he's actually a cancer his birthday is july 22nd so i say to him he actually passed away in 2014 and so understanding the power of water 
uh, me and my family, we are a water family, and I'm very proud of us that we drink lots of water. And you know, I just feel like that is that's that's our family. You know, the fact that we drink water. If we don't got nothing else, we are water based, and so the power of emotions, the power of positive energy and speaking to yourself positively and giving yourself positive affirmations and feeling them though, saying it to the point that you begin to feel it, saying it a couple of times and not really feeling the shit and expecting things to change. Well, we not on that, you know, we want you to really feel it. And we really want to understand this water on that esoteric symbolic level. And the way that a, a way that we can do that is studying the Orisha of the week, Yemaya. Okay. Yemaya, you know, which represents the children of the fish because it is said that life began in water. And so that water um, is a powerful substance, you know. Like I usually do with these Orishas of the week, I'll just read the paragraph that I wrote. Um, be sure to check out this article. There are some things that I didn't get to speak on just for time space, for time's sake, but you know, make sure you check out the website, www.hoodmystic.com. There is an article associated with this video presentation. I put in a lot of work for this. I just didn't, you know, I'm just not here like, running off at the mouth. I'm really trying to explain something that can really empower you and build you up spiritually. So if you rocking with me, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you tell people about this movement that we're doing um, because it's happening. But let's talk about Yemiya and let's talk about what she represents. Yemiya is the great mother who lives and rules over the seas. Esoterically, the seas or the water represent emotions. Although she is maternal and nurturing, she is also fierce. One of the most powerful Orishas in Santeria, the mother of all living things. She gives birth to the stars, the moon, and the sun. She is found in the oceans, lakes, and lagoons. Yemiya's spiritual power is nurturing protection and fertility within Yemiya and her various paths. She carries all experiences of womanhood. The Zodiac sign for Yemiya is cancer. So this solar eclipse, her energy will be highlighted. The saint syncretized to Yemiya in Santeria is our lady of Regula. And so our lady of rock Regula was interesting to me. So I felt like speaking on her and bringing her energy to light and she more or less embodies this water energy because let me just tell you like over time you know over time she is a symbol that has been protected and worshipped based on the fact that she delivers you know so I'm all for stuff that works. So I'm definitely, I definitely bought me a seeded watermelon and I'm going to be at somebody's lake doing an offering to Yemiya just because I don't play around with this type of stuff. And so, um, our lady of regula, um, in Spain, regula is a slang term for menstruation or rule. Uh, she is a black Madonna. Uh, a black Madonna. She was actually carved in the fifth in the fifth century. Uh, she was carved by a man by the name of Saint Augustine, who was actually an African, a Berber, who was is known to be indigenous to North Africa. You know, a high-ranking Roman official. You know, so he got a vision from an angel to sculpt this beautiful. Uh, black Madonna by the name of Our Lady of Regula. And so when he passed away, you know, everything was tore down in his city except his convent. 
where she was. But later, you know, things happen and some monks grabbed her up and they traveled with her. And always, whenever they traveled, they put Our Lady of Regula pointed out towards the ocean. And so no matter what, you know, she always came through for people. So we're talking about the fifth century till now, you know, generally, if energy doesn't work for you, then there's no sense in continue to work with it. But, you know, she is the patron saint of Cuba in all of its entirety. You know, St. Augustine, there is a place in Florida, a city or a town in Florida named after him, you know. So this energy is available for miracles and things of that nature. So my question is to you, why are you not dealing with it or why are you not educating yourself on the power of the Black Madonna? Now, if you look online, you know, the Black Madonna existed before Mother of Mary, you know, um, they say that, uh, you know, based on time and charcoal and things of that nature, but ultimately, you know, that's a farce and maybe it happened a place or two. But for the most part, these black Madonnas represent dark brown or black Madonnas with the same physiology and skin pigmentation matching that of the indigenous population. So this is your ancestral energy that is working for people, you know shrines of black madonna where people travel you know for pilgrimage just to be in the presence and you know you are the black madonna in the flesh walking around you know speaking to the women out there you know you they don't you they you don't have to go to germany or switzerland or you know some weird catholic church to worship the black madonna you know, you can simply look in the mirror <laughs> and start to cure yourself and deal with your ancestral energy that's rising to the surface. Now, if you have a problem and you're not searching for things to cure it and you're just focusing on the problem, well, that problem is going to continue to be a problem. What I tried to do with this video is present you with a variety of different solutions that you could begin to see your way out of any type of turmoil. Like I don't do videos for people who got all of their shit together. You know, what's the point? You know, I don't do videos to brag. I do videos when I do readings or anything that I do, I do with the sincere purpose to raise your spirit, to begin to heal you. That is my answer for things. How am I going to get a man raise your energy? How am I going to get some money? Raise your energy. I don't know what to do with my life. Raise your energy. I'm 33 years old. I generally talk to people 20 years older than me. Everybody that I talk to is ultimately older than me because generally older people understand what I'm saying. Younger people think that, you know, if they get what they really want, then everything will be fine. Generally, I talk to the people who've already accomplished all of that. And then like, damn, that wasn't, I dedicated 40 years of my life to this degree or this career. And now what do I do? You know, the only solution is for your spirit to rise up. And so your spirit can begin to heal you and begin to guide you and give you purpose in life. And so this is what I help with. I have countless testimonials. I have, you know, countless reviews, you know, generally, if you want to talk to somebody who's got a reading for me, I'll send you their phone number so you can text them and tell them what it's like. You know, um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is all I do. You know, I don't do anything else. I, I work in the community, you know, in, a, in a, at a community center or a metaphysical store that, you know, is like a community center. You know, I don't generally get paid to do that, you know, but, you know, this is what I do. And so, you know, I'm not generally asking for nothing in return. I'm asking for support in order for me to begin to support you on a soul level, on a spiritual level. This is something that I do, you know, 
This is not something that I'm trying to do or something that I want to do. This is something that I really do. You know, I really want to help people every day until I die. And so I need help from you guys, <laughs> you know, reach out, you know, help out, you know, donate to my channel, a couple dollars, you know, anything that you can do to just keep this movement going. You know, if you listen to this video for the past 38 minutes and you gain something from it, that's really going to inspire or power you through your journey, then, you know, help a brother out, you know, but, you know, that's just my little sales pitch. And I appreciate you listening and hearing me out, you know, but ultimately I need feedback from this video. What did you get from it? Um, what do you need me to elaborate more on and things of that nature? Any comments, any concerns, any questions, just comment on this video. Be sure to like it. Be sure to share it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Check out the website, www.hoodmystic.com. You know, we're doing a lot, but we have a purpose and that purpose is righteous. So, you know, support that because, you know, what else is out there? So, you know, that's it for this video. Did this on a late night. So if you catching this in the morning, Make sure you have a wonderful day. If you're catching this at night, make sure you rest easy and get prepared for major changes in the future. Uh, but let's do it. Peace.